But when I ask myself over the years, what is the issue with me and proper boundaries? When I hear other people speak about improper, unhealthy boundaries or, or not having healthy boundaries, one of the root issues goes to there is a lack of self-respect for who you are, for who you are not. And that lack of self-respect is rooted in the inability to be able out of faith to understand that all of who you are, all of who you are not is a perfect design creation. And you do not have to feel like there's something wrong with you in the way you think, the way you act, whether it's your antisocial behavior, whether it's your extroversion, whether it is the love, unconditional love, whether it is whatever it is in there, so many different things that we have been programmed to realize is different from somebody else or what we may be appear to be more successful. And so it creates this sense of, I cannot trust how the universe, how the creator has designed me. And when you lose that faith, it opens you up to be disrespected of yourself. And when you don't have that respect for yourself, instead of being able to be in your power and your authority and to live a life of, of putting up appropriate boundaries in every area of your life, you don't have boundaries. One of the, one of the, one of the consistent ways when I examine the lack of boundaries in my life, the lack of boundaries in everybody else's life, it comes from there is something that goes back to you didn't respect who you were, how you were designed, and it's because you didn't believe and trust in that you were made that way special. You've been working on fixing yourself. And so we live in a culture today on this enlightenment journey where a lot of people get into the enlightenment, pro pro enlightenment program and enlightenment journey with this idea of being stuck on fixing themselves, fixing themselves and getting fixed. And sometimes associating healing with being fixed. I was corrected a few weeks ago. I told somebody, yeah, I've been working on my healing. And they said, ah, it was Esther's turn. And she said, when I hear you say healing, something in me feels like you're not saying healing to heal yourself, but healing to fix yourself. I said, yeah, I am trying to fix. She says, that is, that is the root of you for healing. You got to quit trying to fix yourself. Because you're not, there's nothing wrong with aspects of us that we've been conditioned, ingrained and think is wrong with us. And so when it becomes to this way of recognizing that there are aspects of you, of your character, your personality, your reactions, your emotional configuration that is designed perfectly for you. It may has caused, it may cause problems to your mother growing up. It may have made her job inconvenient. It may have not made you the best student, but you best believe that nonetheless, there was a perfection in how you were created. And when you can accept that by faith, that look, this is how God made me. This is who I am. It allows you to put up the proper boundary. So it starts with this faith that says, you know what? I may, this may be ugly to you. You may find it disgusting. This may appear to create, make me look like a failure in this area, but this is who I am. And I'm gonna set myself for better, for worse, out of the basis because I have been created perfectly by the creator and I have faith in that. And that gives me a self-respect for all of who I am, but it also gives me respect for all of who I am not. It gives me respect for all of who I am not. And when you understand who you are not, that is where the true power of your boundaries comes up. Because you can be able to say as an introvert, hey, I'm not made and wired for that much social interaction. I've got to assert, assert some type of boundary and protection myself. And so the more you can, out of faith, accept yourself, accept who you are not, accept who you are, it gives you a respect for yourself. You can respect your emotions. You can respect your create. You can res respect the way you're wired to respond. You can respect your sexuality. You can respect your intelligence or you can respect the lack of intelligence that you may have. And out of that respect, you can say, hey, this is who I am. And it allows you to put up the proper boundaries. But it not only does it allow you to put the proper boundaries, but it also allows you to surrender. Because what prevents us from surrendering is the fact that we feel like something is wrong. 
with us. Something is wrong out here. Something is wrong in there. We got to change it. We got to fix it. I got to come up with an answer. I got to come up with a solution because this just can't be right. I just can't relax and let life be. But when you have faith that everything is in a perfected order, it gives you a self-respect for yourself. You now can begin to truly, truly practice the real art of surrendering. And what you begin to realize is the surrendering work has nothing to do with surrendering to circumstances. It has nothing to do with surrendering to the inner situations that's going on. It has all to do with surrendering to the acceptance of your reactions and your responses. And what I mean by that is I don't have to surrender to the storm tonight. I don't have to surrender and say, okay, I got to let go and surrender that it's raining, surrender that it's storming. That's none of my concern. What I got to surrender to is the fear in me and understand and respect God made me fearful. For whatever reason, there is fear in me of a thunderstorm. There's fear in me of this lightning. There is fear in me of the dark. I'm going to respect that that fear is, is, is a gift of God created perfectly, and I can begin to accept and surrender, not give in, but accept and surrender the fear happening in me. It's not about accepting the storm out there. It's not about surrendering to the fact that it's a big storm is coming. It's about surrendering to my reaction and my response to it inside of myself. It's not surrendering to the situation of being abandoned. You're not, you're not surrendering to being abandoned by your love interest or by your whoever has abandoned you. You're surrendering to your reaction of how it makes you feel. And you do it because you can respect that, ouch, this hurts. I've been given a sensitive heart. I've been given a heart. I've been given an ability to connect and bond deeply with somebody. Now they've abandoned me, and I'm going to respect this pain of this separation. I don't have to put my focus in trying to surrender and accept to being abandoned or surrender and accept somebody else's actions. I can respect and surrender to what's happening inside of me because I can understand and respect, oh, this hurts. This feels painful. This feels humiliating. This makes me feel sad. This makes me feel in love. This makes me feel in joy. I want to celebrate. And so what you begin to do is you can learn to respect that these emotions, these feelings, the good and the bad of them, you can begin to respect them. And that is where surrender is an eternal thing. It's not surrendering to the external situations. It's surrendering to your internal responses. And that surrender, that respect connected to faith because it says, I don't have to do anything to make this happen. I don't have to do anything to, to make my desires come alive. I don't have to do anything itself, sit here and accept out of respect for my desires. You have a desire for love, just respect it. You don't have to go make it happen. You have to go initiate it. You just, you can actually give you the ability to say, hey, if it's here, if I have a desire for this new car, if I have a desire for love, I have a desire to be seen, if I have a desire to be famous, I can respect that desire and trust out of some respect it's a perfect desire i don't have to make it happen i can surrender not my will that will be done to whatever is happening and moving through me without having to feel the need i now must go and try to make something happen get something done i must get rid of this pain i must fix myself it's just honoring and respecting okay of course i'm naturally hurt i'm naturally abundant oh I'm, oh, oh i want to celebrate you can surrender and just let the emotions be. You don't have to take any action unless something has come for you to respond to. And so how transmutation happens of your life is you first have this faith in the perfection of how you're made inside all dynamics of yourself, inside your external. That gives you a self-respect and that self-respect naturally is the ability to surrender and accept your internal self and who you are externally, internally, your physical, emotional, chemical state of being without having to feel the need to control external circumstances, without feeling the need that you have to have your way because you understand 
that you can sit back and respect whatever's happening to you. There is a higher power that has got this all perfectly working out where everything will be taken care of. And all you have to do is take an inspired action. Respond when you need to respond. Initiate when you see that it's an opportunity for you to initiate. Or if you wait for an invitation. I'm using the design language here. Y'all see where I'm going with this. But it starts with this first faith and accepting of the perfection of how you've been created which leads to a self-respect for all of who you are, but most importantly, all of who you are not. It is your faith in how the higher power made you that gives you the ability to respect who you are not, just as well as who you are. It gives you the ability to respect your limitations and your gifts. And it's not until you can respect your limitations and your strengths that you're gonna know how to put up the proper boundaries. And then when you can put up the proper boundaries, and then you can respect your limitations and you can respect your strengths. That was, that's what, that's what, on top of that faith and that self-respect, that's what's gonna give you the grounded ability to surrender and let go of control. And so the path of enlightenment, what I learned is being able to see the importance of, first of all, and this is, it's, a, it's a real test every day, is the faith in the perfection of how I've been created which gives me a sense of respect for who I am and who I am not, which allows me to have the boundaries and it allows me then the ability to, to fall back and surrender to what's happening in me, not so much external situations around me. If I'm being abandoned, I don't have to surrender to the idea of what happened or who did what to me. I can surrender to how I'm feeling inside. If I'm afraid of the situation, I don't have to surrender to the, the horrific external situation, but I can surrender to this fear that's moving to me and let it let this happen in me and let it move through me. And that will keep you in the flow. It will keep you in the power of the now. And it's that power of that now is in that flow that the transmutation and transformation organically and naturally happens. All you gotta do is just be present. And that is how that triple intricate flow of faith in the perfection of how you've been created that leads to self-respect that naturally gives you the ability to then truly surrender. Thank you all for listening to that talk and that presentation. Questions and answers time. Um, do you have any tips on how to like just get yourself in the moment like quickly? Like when you realize you're not in the moment, is that real? Is that putting you in the moment when you just become aware of it? It is. Being aware that you're not in the moment definitely puts you in the moment. Okay? But it's more so beginning to ask yourself, what is happening here that you're resisting? There's something that you're resisting, and usually it does always go back to there's something in your mind, you've given your mind some type of control to change or to need to fix something. And usually when you're not in the moment, there is some lack of faith in something being not perfect. There is some lack of trust. There is some lack of trust that all is not well. And so the one way to ground yourself in the moment really goes back to this idea of let me get back centered in my faith that first of all, all is well. All is well with me all is well was happening outside of me, which is, doesn't matter what happens outside of you as long as all is well is in he, you. And so that's why uh, ground, that's why prayer, prayer is so essential. Prayer is a loyalty. And that's why nothing, nothing is more powerful to ground yourself in Psalms 23. Because it starts with the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not be in want. I'm made to lie down in green pastures, which is the power of now. I'm led by the still waters. I will have all my, it said all, all my needs are met. And when you focus on it line by line, you're regrounding and recentering yourself. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for asking that question. Any other comments, questions, or answers? Time.